Okay, so the goal of this video is to evaluate the, a PhD dissertation uh, that I am going to present in one of our cognitive psychology meetings. Uh, and it's about the grammatical person in text and narrative. Uh, just to put this a little more in context, the reason why our group is interested in this is to evaluate the role of first person narratives in uh, how they can influence um, either physician or patient decisions in the context of uh, advertisements, so web based advertisements or TV advertisements, any type of advertisement. And um, so basically, this is a dissertation submitted by Tristan uh, Thompson in 2009. And I should say it's an absolutely outstanding dissertation. Uh, you know, I truly, truly enjoyed reading this. Uh, not only it does a very good job in terms of, uh, of the overview about the text. Uh, you know, we have been looking for a long time for some kind of text that would give us an experimental point of view in terms of first-person uh, narratives. Uh, but also the experiments are, are, are very bright. Now, I am not going to go over the content of the, the dissertation uh, itself. Um, you know, you're more than welcome. And actually, I actually highly encourage you to go over the, the, the content of this dissertation. But instead, uh, what I am going to be focusing on is some um, uh, basic concepts in terms of you know what I believe, and, and again this is my interpretation uh, only of uh, what the main findings of uh, uh, this narrative uh, have. So again, in my interpretation, the primary uh, 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 finding or the finding out of the the, the different experiments uh, in this dissertation are the following: that a first person narrative will put the reader, the reader, very important, take a perspective uh, or I should say a spatial perspective uh, from the perspective uh, 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 of the person uh, of the main character in the the, the 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 narrative. So again, you know, and, and he, uh, uh, you know, this dissertation it it, it, it uh, uses a number of different experiments. Uh, and the you know, even though I don't think this is the only explanation, he provides extensive uh, evidence to demonstrate that this relationship does hold. So if I am reading something that has an I there, uh, you know, I am really embracing, you know, that character in the, 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 the narrative. However, if uh, uh, the narrative has a day, then, you know, I'm not going to be looking through the main character's I, but I am going to be looking from somebody else's it's going to be coming from the outside. Now, what I would like to do here is not to challenge uh, this uh, main conclusion because you know I think that you know it's uh, you know at least the evidence that's presented here is uh, uh, correct. What I would like to do is to expand this a little bit uh, and try to see this from a different perspective. So the way I came to see uh, this is that uh, a first person narrative it does not only provide uh, 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 gives uh, 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 you know raises the issue of what I would call a spatial schema in other words defining schema here which is a number of different concepts that are all connected. If you're talking about a spatial schema, uh, it means that if you imagine yourself in a given space, um, you know, we naturally, that's something that humans do very naturally. 
uh, you know, we just start imagining ourselves in a space, and all of a sudden, you know, we can connect all the different things uh, that are in that space, and that creates a schema. Okay. So whenever you imagine yourself in a given space, all of a sudden, you know, because we need to, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we need to uh, be oriented in space. Uh, we automatically connect those uh, 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 you know, different elements. Actually, you know, this is a very ancient uh, uh, technique uh, from rhetoric. Uh, I believe, and I don't know if it was exactly Aristotle, uh, but you know, several uh, uh, people in uh, rhetoric uh, used this uh, memory device, which is if you're trying to remember a text. Uh, that's long. You just associate different portions of the, the text uh, with a given space, and then as you are delivering uh, uh, a speech with that text in mind, you just you know start walking through that space, and the content of the text will come to you. So basically, you know, what, what I'm trying to say here is that the spatial uh, schema is so powerful uh, that even to remember texts, you know, this is very helpful. But uh, again, back to this uh, example here, my argument is that the spatial schema is only one out of many potential different uh, schemata or uh, schemas uh, that you can connect a first person narrative to. So basically, before getting to the spatial schema, uh, you know, you have schemas in general, okay? And then, in addition to the spatial schema, you can have other types of schema such as, for example, emotional schema. Oops. Or you could have decision schema. And uh, basically, you know, several of these could be connected to this decision schema. So, for example, an emotional schema could be connected to a decision schema. For example, uh, you know, if there's one person that I don't like, uh, my decision schema is whenever that person uh, uh, is uh, involved, you know, I'm going to be, well, I don't want to go in that direction because, you know, I, the reality is that person brings me some unpleasant uh, uh, feelings, so, you know, I dislike that person, so, I, you know, I'm just not going to go there. In terms of the spatial schema, well, if I find myself in a certain environment, uh, in a dangerous environment, you know, I'm going to be more defensive. I'm not going to be so uh, uh, take so many risks. If I am in a situation, a space where I feel completely safe, then I'm going to be more uh, willing to take risks. Now, what's interesting in this by, is that by expanding the schema from this dissertation, from just talking in terms of um, of, uh, uh, you know, just the spatial schema. And I should say, in the dissertation, the word schema uh, is never used with the exception of one sentence where it's mixed with several other cognitive uh, concepts. So for some reason, and maybe there is a reason, you know, the, the concept of the spatial schema never really came up. But what's interesting, whenever you start, uh, uh, you know, pointing to all of these uh, uh, different schemas, is that then, all of a sudden, you can combine two types of schemas, which is uh, the schema from the person who created the narrative, which, after all, when that person, the author, uh, created the text, uh, he or she was thinking, had a specific spatial scheme in mind, he or she had a specific emotional scheme in mind, and a decision schema in mind. So basically what you have now here is a much, what I would say, much richer context uh, because you are merging, you're blending, uh, you know, the schemas or the schemata from the, per the person reading the text and the person who read the text. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because especially when you put things in the context of a decision schemata, uh, you know, things become much more interesting. So, and you can start explaining a, a wider range of phenomena, such as, um, 
you know, what uh, uh, is called in the literature the the the, the first person. Um, uh, um, uh, well, the first person narrative. So think uh, uh, about this for, for a second. Um, let's see, uh, you know, there, there are studies uh, 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 demonstrating this. So, for example, during the, the absolutely horrible genocide that happened in Rwanda, I believe that, you know, somewhere around 800,000 people were killed. This is probably one of the biggest strategies in human history. Uh, you know, it's absolutely impossible to describe the amount of suffering that went uh, on uh, 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 with, with that genocide. Despite that, uh, people in the United States, in the United States uh, you know, took many, many years uh, to even acknowledge the existence of the genocide. Now you could say, okay, so is this that you know people are in, you know they don't have an emotion or something? Well, not really. Uh, you know, studies have shown that whenever you describe something in a, uh, in a, uh, what I would call in a non-personal way, whenever you cannot impersonate the, the narrative, whenever you cannot have one single person uh, being uh, looking through the eyes of that person, uh, this, you know, uh, those kinds of emotions are very, very hard for people to uh, uh, relate to. Uh, however, think about, you know, and there were multiple situations, unfortunate situations like this, where, for example, a little child uh, fell into a, uh, 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 you know, a river or something, and then people were trying to rescue that child, uh, and, you know, then the whole country just basically stops. Why? Uh, is it because people care about more about, you know, the death of one child than 800,000 people like in the Rwanda genocide? No, not really. It's just that, you know, by focusing on one person, uh, most people will basically take the perspective of the parent, or of one of the parents of that child, uh, and, you know, they will relate to that in a much, uh, 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 you know, it will be much easier for them to relate. Of course, you know, that's not the only explanation for those facts. Uh, it also has to do with our ability to, you know, big numbers of people, you know, that's, you know, that's very difficult for us to relate to, so we can relate much better to individuals. Uh, but where I'm trying to get here is that in the case of, uh, you know, the single child versus the 800,000 people, uh, you know, there's an emotional schema, uh, and therefore there's a decision scheme. So I'm going to take my time to, uh, uh, to think about the child versus, well, I'm going to be a little skeptical about a genocide with 800,000 people. Uh, if in that narrative, you know, I could place myself in, uh, uh, you know, with the images on TV, exactly where the, the accident with the child happened, then all of a sudden, you know, I have a station schema. I can see where all the events are. And again, I can be impersonated. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, most people have never been to Rwanda. Uh, and so it's really hard for them to, 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 to get to, uh, you know, think about them in that uh, 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 specific scenario. Um, so anyway, so this is, a, you know, what I would say is a, you know, a little broader explanation uh, about the dissertation that we just saw. Uh, let me just emphasize that, you know, this dissertation is absolutely outstanding and uh, I would really recommend uh, that if you have the time, uh, you know, you, uh, uh, you go over this uh, text. Uh, it's definitely worth it. We are going to learn a lot.